Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the best ambassador of his country, Tony Melotto from the Philippines. Tony, what do you think of the film? Beautiful. Beautiful. You, you shot it with your heart. That's true, that's true. So, Tony, you are already a role model for a lot of young people, but having switched from one life to another one when you turn 40, could you also uh, be an example for top executives if they want to follow your footsteps? Well, this is what positive economy is all about. And uh, we can, if the poor can change, then the rich can change. If the jobless can change, then the top executives can change. I work with uh, over 500 CEOs in my country. They're good people, they're citizens of the planet. They want a better life and a better future for their own children. And do you think that some uh, top executives can uh, quit their jobs to do what you do? <laughs> <laughs> they have to keep on running their companies, but they can be social entrepreneurs while running a big business. But I want their children to become social entrepreneurs. That's why I'm here in France every month to get the top graduates of HEC, SAK, SCP, of Lille, because Asia is waiting for the French to bring their knowledge, to bring their technology, and for also to give them a bright future, because the future of, uh, of Europeans is not in Europe alone, but in the emerging economies of Asia. And the Philippines is the best place in Asia as a social entrepreneur, because we speak English, we will learn to speak French soon, <laughs> and, and we have democratic space, we have, uh, we have reached rock bottom, and there's no place to go but up. We will not stay poor. But uh, with the uh, rich and poor working together with the Filipinos and the French, Working together, we can create a better world where there's only na will not only improve the lives of our people, but also provide career and business opportunities for the French in Asia. So, Tony, can you tell me more about your special relationship with France, with France, sorry, and what you call the French connection? Well, I, I'm in love with France. Uh, <laughs> for whatever reason, they were the first to discover. Uh, our concept of social business. It started with uh, students, tw with 12 students from ESCP, mm -hmm. and then now we have uh, hundreds of them coming every year, and uh, we want their help to uh, develop our chocolate industry because they are addicted to chocolates, but they don't grow chocolate trees here in France. And uh, we want them to <laughs> develop our essential oils because uh, they need that for Chanel and Dior. So there is so much that we can do together. And it is when you get uh, the brightest and the best who can think macro to help also develop the supply chain, we need to have macro and micro working together. We need to re have the rich and the poor working together. We need to get the elite from the urban areas to go to the countryside because there's just so much opportunity. We should not abandon the land. And we should learn from the lessons of the past that everyone migrates to the, to the big city when, and then abandoning the land. But the future of the world is in food security and water. And we need to just continue to become producers rather than just consumers. So you welcome foreign entrepreneurs to come to the Philippines, but you know that the Philippines is one of the most difficult places in the world to set up a business. Of course not. We have the most honest president right now in Asia. We have the most competent uh, uh, cabinet, and we have a very good ambassador here with us. And so uh, this is the best the best time to come to the Philippines, because we have just hit the highest GDP in Asia. Of course, of course, although Mr. Siglitz says that GDP is not the best measure, but the fact is that we were always rock bottom. And now, uh, because of the uh, trust that we have gained from the global community, and also because our people now trust our government, we are now really trying to our best to define ourselves in the eyes of the global community. So in the documentary, you said that you want the Philippines to become a social hub in Asia. 
Yes. Why and how um, can you make it happen? Because uh, as an emerging economy, we want to achieve in inclusive economic growth. We want to create wealth for the bottom of the pyramid. We want people to prosper without leaving the poor behind. And as you have seen, my son-in-law is from England. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not even a foreigner mm -hmm. now. He is also Filipino. So we are preparing for a future where we are all family. I want my four of my eight grandchildren are half Europeans. So I want Europe to prosper because I want them always to, call, to value their, their European side. But I also want the Europeans to see the Philippines as their home in Asia. And that's the only way that we can achieve peace and that we can achieve abundance for all if we start to see each other as family, that no one is an enemy or a victim. So here we're talking about positive economy. How, uh, do you have the feeling to be part of it? And do you think that positive economy is just a trend or it's, it's the future of the world? Well, the, it's the future of the world if we think positive. Because the first thing for positive economy to work is for us to be positive ourselves. Let's discard cynicism. Let's just uh, uh, hope that it will be a better and kinder and, and safer world. And it will be. And let's see the French as family, let's see uh, the Africans as family, we see Christians and Muslims as family. Then that is the positive economy that uh, we're thinking of. This is your definition of positive economy? Yes, uh, that is that your happiness is dependent on the happiness of other people. And uh, so the, the thing here is never enter into any conflict for my sake. For in my case, just do more good. If bad things are done to you, just do more good. So James Clark said, a politician thinks of the next election. A statement thinks of the next de generation. Are you a statement? <laughs> I'm just an ordinary citizen of this planet. I just want to live a life with a purpose. And uh, now I'm happy because I enjoy, you know, I, uh, France is my home. And uh, anywhere where there are people who, are, who, who love this planet and uh, who see me as family, it's my home. I build thousands of homes. Wherever I go, I have a home. I feel without having to own anything, I am the richest man in the planet. I come to France, I don't even have to worry where, where my next meal will come from. And tonight I learned I'll be having dinner with the finance minister. So, do you feel at home in France too? Very like much. In the Philippines? The, uh, I still don't understand. Uh, I don't speak French, but the, but uh, I don't need to under, to know French language. I just understand the the heart of the French and the language of the heart. You know, is something that I can understand. So next week we will have a very important event. Can you tell us about it? Next year, next week uh, we have uh, many French people and others from 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 Netherlands and even from Australia. They'll be gathering to, in the Philippines for the Social Business Summit Asia for uh, inclusive growth in the Asian market. And uh, they will be looking at chocolate, dairy, essential oil. They'll be looking at different industries. We have lined up about 30 different industries that they could explore. And we would like to attract social entrepreneurs in France and Europe to also partner with social entrepreneurs in the Philippines. There will also be investors who will be coming. We want to really secure uh, the future of the world through partnership, through friendship, through, uh, in, uh, through social business that, uh, that creates value for everyone, rich and poor, Filipino and, and, and foreign, that there will come a time we're no longer foreign to one another because uh, we are connected uh, with our heart. So maybe it's time for you to look for people who might um, who, uh, are okay to follow you to the well, Philippines. Maybe we have like uh, a few uh, minutes ahead. Maybe you can ask uh, questions to uh, to Tito Tony. Can uh, est-ce que vous avez des questions well, dans la salle pour uh, intervenir dans dans cette discussion? Est-ce qu'il y a des personnes qui uh, souhaitent donc, euh, commenter, euh, lui poser en direct une question. Je vois une main qui se lève. Oui, euh, je peux poser la question en français ou en anglais Allez-y, comme vous le souhaitez. 
Bon, français, si... Je voudrais savoir euh, votre énergie, euh, comment euh, elle s'est créée, d'où elle vient et j'imagine que vous avez eu des moments de désespoir et comment vous avez réagi pour continuer cette tâche mm -hmm. You have such energy. How does it come from and do you sometimes have doubts? Oh yes, uh, that's why I call it a faith journey. And uh, I just realized that uh, there must be purpose to my life. And uh, the biggest disappointment I had in the beginning were the gang leaders who were killed because the inv I was not working hard enough to make it safer for them. They surrendered their weapons, they went back to school, but some of them were killed by their former enemies. And uh, one person hanged himself because we were not able to sustain the livelihood training that we had. So these are the painful lessons that I had. And I also lost many friends because they were willing to give to charity, but they were not willing to be in solidarity. And unless there is solidarity, there is no sustainability. And so I would like to really think long term. So I've set a 21-year uh, development timeline, because my background is economics, and what I've been hearing in this last day here has been music to my ears. And it is important for us now uh, to really see that we all have a role to play And by, my role is to be an ordinary citizen working mm -hmm. in dangerous areas to make them safer. But next week during our social business summit, the president of the Philippines is coming to the farm. He will, be, uh, he will end the summit. But we also have the vice president coming and we have six of the ministers coming. So by working with the weak and the powerless, we gain the respect of the most powerful people in our country. Très intéressant. Est-ce qu'il y a une autre question? Je vois une main qui se lève. Euh, vous m'entendez, oui. Euh, je ne sais pas depuis combien de temps vous venez en France et je ne sais pas comment vous considérez la France qui est a priori considérée comme un pays riche. Comment voyez-vous la pauvreté qui, nous en tant que Français, on la voit et particulièrement en tant que Parisien, comment faire Est-ce que vous avez des... Qu'en pensez-vous Qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire So, um, she doesn't know for how long have you been coming to France but uh, she would like to have your point of view about poverty and uh, poverty in France in comparison with poverty in the Philippines. How do you uh, look at our poverty? Do you see it? And what is your feeling towards it? Well, there's a big difference. We've lived with poverty for so long. We learned, to, uh, we learned uh, also to uh, cope with it and also to do something about it. And uh, I guess we also realize that with all the typhoons, with, all the, with 350 years of colonization, and uh, now that we have the freedom, uh, we want to really uh, uh, define, you know, uh, build a, a, a country as a land of opportunity for our people. They don't have to leave the country to become domestic workers abroad and be separated from their family. But then they co I come to France, and you are a rich country that is seeing poverty for the first time in your own country. So you do not know how to deal with it. I came from the bottom, and every improvement, we are very happy. You are at the top, and any problem, you become unhappy. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we will share our happiness with you. Please come to the Philippines. <laughs> and do you see poverty in France? Um, uh, not really. I don't see it because I see only the beautiful dock of Le, Le Havre. I go to Paris, but uh -huh. I'm sure that, that uh, you, I, I, I watch on television and uh, I see that uh, you are starting to have poverty here in Europe. Even Switzerland, unthinkable. To have, now they have 10% poverty. So I guess with the greater competition among the graduates of the top universities, Uh, there is greater anxiety because uh, if the economy is not growing, then there, there, then there will be less jobs. If I think of what's happening in Spain, I'm very unhappy for them. So um, I, I, I tell them, if you have problems in Spain, come to the Philippines. So, Tony, before ending this session, I have a favor to ask you. You call yourself a radical optimist. Can I use it to define myself, this expression? Yes, of course, because you are. 
I think uh, after such a, uh, uh, as a you know, exciting life, now I can see you having a gracious and peaceful life because you are now starting to see the world you know, in the goodness that it has. So just look at the glass as not as, not as half empty. Always look at it as half full and you will fill it up. And uh, Shamengo, I think that's the goal, to really make, uh, connect all the radical optimists in the world. And that's what the positive economy is about that uh, there is so much blessing and abundance in this planet, but we simply have to share it with one another. Tony, thank you so much for being with us. It's a privilege. Thank you so much.